Welcome to video three in a series of introductory videos for SolidCAM. This video's topic is new milling CAM project. Uh, so essentially this video will cover when you open up a new part for programming. So we start from the SolidWorks part, as you see here, and we're gonna go to tools, SolidCAM, new, and then we choose the module of the of the machine we're gonna post this to. So in this case, this part is actually a milling part, so we're gonna go with milling. But if you were doing a turning part or a mill turn part, then you can choose one of the other, other modules. This first window here allows us to choose what type of model, what kind of part file we're about to create. In this case, uh, it's external versus internal. External and internal, uh, the difference is the relationship of our solid cam part with the original SolidWorks part. Meaning that, for instance, with internal, you can see here this window is just going to add a folder with this name, indicating that this is for SolidCAM for milling. And all it's going to do is just put our tool tables, our tool paths, anything related to SolidCAM in a folder inside of the SolidWorks feature tree. So you would just see a, see a folder at the bottom of this list with this name. We're working on the original SolidWorks part, and we're just adding tool paths on top of that original SolidWorks part file. So it's one file, you check in and out. So it's best for things like file management and that sort of thing. The drawback is that you're only working on the one part file. It's a single solid you're working on. You can't add in any vices or clamps or anything like that. For that, you want to go with the external model. An external solid cam file is a solid cam only separate file. You'll actually see it is a separate file in your, your hard drive, your network location where you're saving this, and it allows you to work only inside a solid cam. You can add your tool paths, tool tables, and you won't see that on the original part file. The original design model, the original designer doesn't see what you're doing to the part. Um, in addition to that, external actually exists as a SolidWorks assembly file, meaning that you can bring in additional solids for things like stock definition, vices, clamps, anything like that. It's a much more versatile version of the part file. So that's actually the one we recommend on the tech support side. So if I were to go with external, you can see that it's giving it a name that is essentially the same name as the SolidWorks model. Uh, that's by design. A lot of times people would like by de default to have just the SolidWorks, the solid cam model have the same name so that they seem related. Um, but here we'll just give it a quick name. So that will differentiate it on my hard drive. And since this is a separate part file, I can tell it where I'd like to save it. So we saw in video one that there is a cam parts directory. That's actually this location here. So if I do not have anything checked here as where I'd like to save it, it'll save it in that CAM part directory, or I can browse to, to save this wherever I like. By default, I actually have this box checked here, which will allow me to actually save it right next to wherever the model is. So the SOLIDWORKS model and the SOLIDCAM model, I can have them automatically by default, side by side, in their save locations. I don't have to browse to that location at all. And then below there is the units of measure. So I mentioned in video one that the default would be inch, and here we are here. I've opened up a brand new part file, and the default is inch, but again, I have the ability to choose whichever unit I'd like to use going forward. So, as soon as I set up the part, I can click on the green check mark. It will close the original model and open up a copy of it, relabel it design model, and now I can program on top of that. So, here is the second window that we're going to encounter. Again, by default, as we saw in video one, I set it up to use the Haas SS post, but if on this one part file, it's gonna to go to a different machine, I have the ability to choose whatever post would be best for that machine. Below there, I have the coordinate system. So the coordinate system is actually the first offset on your machine. You can see in the top left here, I have Mac one position one. Mac one translates to the first offset on your machine. Mac two would be the second offset. Mac three would be the third offset and so forth. So whatever your post is going to post out in terms of offsets, either G54, P1, E1, whatever it is on your machine, inside the software, it's called Mac one. Position, is really just the angle off of that setup. So if you're doing fourth or fifth axis code and you have an indexed position, position two, three, four would be those index positions. It would be the part at 90 degrees, 45 degrees, whatever it is you're setting up. So Mac one position one will be just the first offset at zero degrees. 
to set up a coordinate system, we have the five options here on the left side here. And really the thing that ties them together is what geometry you have on screen and how you'd like to use it to define your coordinate system. So we have select face, define, select coordinate system, normal to current view, and by three points. I'm gonna start from the bottom here. To define a coordinate system by just three points, it would be for geometry where you don't have any lines or faces or anything. You're starting from just a 2D print or you're starting from something that has no sharp edges. By three points is basically you will choose something that represents the origin. I'm just gonna grab it off the part there. Something in the X direction. So let's say this point over here, you can see the X pops up. Something in the Y direction, that's something being just a point or a vertice. As soon as I get X and Y, I have Z. Define works in a similar way. I choose an origin. I can choose either a point or a line in the X direction. In this case, I'll use this line, and it generates an X direction to wherever I click. So let's say I just click over there. Let me go back to that. So I say origin. I'll pick a point in the X direction, a point in the Y direction. X and Y gives us Z. Let's go to Normal to current view is more for multi-axis. What that does is actually when I click on this button, it just uses whatever origin I defined for the setup origin. In this case, if this was Mac 1 position 2, my origin was right there. X goes to the right, Y goes to the top of the screen, and Z goes out of the screen. Select coordinate system is if you had any SolidWorks coordinate system defined in the part file before you even brought into SolidCam. So I would have a list here of any coordinate systems that were previously defined by SolidWorks, and then I could just choose those and make those the SolidCam coordinate system. One thing I, I, I should note is there is the SolidWorks coordinate system down here that is no longer used as soon as you create one of these coordinate systems. So that's why from the list, you'll choose a SolidWorks one and make it a SolidCam one. Otherwise, we don't care what SolidWorks is doing in terms of coordinate systems. And then finally, select face is the one that's most commonly used, and it is using faces off your part. So if I wanted to define this part, I can click on the top face, and it places my origin anywhere I want. Now in this case, if I look in my place coordinate system origin two, I had it set to top center of model box, but I have other options here that allow me to create the coordinate system, create the origin anywhere I want. I could have said top center of model box, and then when I choose the face, it actually would put it in the top corner. So let's go back. So if I change this to top corner of model box, and click on that top face, it now places it in the top corner. Whatever option you choose here, it doesn't actually matter because eventually you'll come down to the rest of this list and place it anywhere you want. Once the origin is on screen, you can just shift it to wherever you need. So let's say in this case, I don't want it in that top corner. I wanted it in this corner. I can say pick origin, move it over here. So you see the origin is shifted over there. And now my X and Y are in the wrong direction. I want the X to go in that direction. So I'll do a flip around Z. And now I have my X in that direction. Other options exist to change the angle or to change the position. So wherever you need that origin to be relative to your part, you can place it on screen using these uh, different options here. Once you've got your origin, you can go ahead and define your stock. So we go to stock. Again, five different options here they are again whatever geometry you have available to you so if i were defining a a, um, a turning part i can go to cylinder and define a basic cylinder around the z-axis the od id and length around the part it's just a basic shape around the part similar to that is box i can put a just a length width and depth box around my part and define that in various ways extruded boundary grabs the outside edge of the part and then extrudes it to the overall length of the part. So you actually get the outside edge of the part. This is good for wire cut or, or laser cut parts. That way you can just get the outside shape. You don't have to worry about trying to chop these corners off of a block or anything like that. 3D model 
is if there was a model on screen that represented the, the stock, let's say a previously machined part, an extrusion, a casting, anything that is not the, the cylinder or the box shape, you can define using a 3D model. You just need to bring that into your SOLIDWORKS model, bring that into your SOLIDCAM external file, and then you can select that as your stock. You'll also see here that we have the ability to use the configurations as well. So if this part had configurations, I can now choose that solid as my stock. But let's go back to box. So if I only had the final part and I needed to put a box stock around my part, I have three options. Relative to model allows me to click on the solid and then just say, uh, from each face, just add 100 thou or whatever I put. These values come from the default settings we saw in video one. But let's say I want this to be on size, I can say zero for each face, and you can see that green sketch shifts so that it just changes the size of the stock. This is a way to define stock when you don't actually know the size of your stock. You just wanna get going, you just need something to define in terms of stock, this is how you would do it. But let's say you actually knew the size of your stock. There's two ways to define the size of the stock. You can either use absolute coordinates, which will be based off that coordinate system we just created. And here you can see my four by four cube is centered around that, that origin. I can change these so that it actually um, represents the, the, the true size. Let's say we had five by zero by zero by six by zero by one. So I can define the, the cube or the rectangle any way I want based off of that origin. That is if you know the size of your stock and you want to kind of um, set it up relative to your origin a certain way. But let's say we wanted to make it even easier on ourselves. We know the size of the stock, but we don't really care about how it sits around the origin. We want to sit around the part. We'll go to stock size, and that actually allows me to put in the size of my stock. So let's say we put in that five by six by let's say two piece of stock. So now it's not really centered around the origin, it's centered around the part. You can see here below here, we have the offset. These symbols indicate that it's centered. So if we looked at the part, we would see that it's centered on all those faces. If we take a look at the Z, let's say I just wanted 10 thou from the top face of the part. I would say in the Z positive direction, I want that to only have 10 thou. So it shifted it, it's still the same size of stock, but now it's only 10 thou above the part, as you can see there. So if you have the definite size of stock, I would use the stock size and then just center it or offset it from the side you want. And that is your stock definition. If you want these green, green sketches to remain behind to be used in your toolpath, just click add box to CAD model and that leaves the sketch behind. Okay. And then finally, there is the target definition. Target is the final part. Now, all you gotta do is just click on the solid, and then you're telling SolidCam that you're using your toolpaths and all that to achieve what that part looks like. Generally, you just need your post and your coordinate system selection to get going, but the selection of the stock and the target allows you to use the simulations, which we'll see once we get into videos four and on where we use toolpaths. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. Send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at SolidCamSupport.com. And also stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this introductory series. Thanks for watching.